Dalmatians 3 is... No! The Kid Icarus review this! You can review it too! <laughs> I don't give a shit. Fuck off. I actually have kept this in mind that this one has been covered by others. So, during my initial reaction, I inflicted it on Loz. So I'd get some unique reactions from a blissfully ignorant mind. That I kind of destroyed with this shit. Right, this is the one I needed you for because I've done like a few of these, but this one's been covered by this guy on YouTube, so I don't want to end up making the same observations or jokes as him. So I figured if I've got someone who's never heard of this piece of shit before to watch it as well. <laughs> Please tell me it's two player. It's no player. Okay. You'll see what I mean. Yeah. Oh my god. It's boring already. So, why start with Dalmatians 3? I mean, aren't I missing the nuanced story of Dalmatians 1 and 2? Why didn't I start with them? That's because there isn't a Dalmatians 1 or 2, and this is actually just a Dingo Pictures movie, which was basically designed to rip off every animated Disney dog film ever made, from 101 Dalmatians to Lady and the Tramp. There was a predecessor movie, but it wasn't called Dalmatians 1, and as far as I'm aware, there are only two of these in existence. I was initially confused because I skimmed the original and then realised that a lot of the scenes in the original were the same as this one, and I began to wonder if this was some sort of redub or something. It was difficult to determine what the hell I was even looking at. Turns out that Dalmatians 2 wasn't long enough, so they decided to tell a recycled animation story where they basically just did the same thing again, showing Dalmatians 1 from about 20 minutes into about the end, which is fucking baffling. They did the same thing with Countryside Bears and the Wabu movie, although it kind of makes a bit more sense with this one, it's still lazy as fuck. Child murderer! Child murderer! <laughs> This thing, like all others, was made by our friends the Code Monkeys, who I hope to cover more of their games later on in the future. Mostly to make people who hate people who review things that other people have reviewed sad. So the movie starts off with a bunch of dogs fucking around on a farm, and the cat, Charlie from Nice Cats, is a prick, and the dogs want to beat him into a coma. No really, that's what they say. Like, they flat out say that they want to beat him into a coma. One of these days, I'll beat him up so bad that he doesn't know who he is. Oh yeah, I'll help you. So the cat buys them a cake. Yeah, a cake. However, he stole Wabu's evil scheme, making everyone sneeze. Though I don't know what this stupid cat's laughing at, it's not like he can claim to be smarter than them when Wabu managed to trick him into catching Shunshine. Hopefully he's learnt to curb his tongue since. Oh, and he jerks off. I think. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, then he runs off like this. Nasty! Whoa, he sure put a lot of weight on from all that running. Whatever the shit sense that makes. So this stupid bird fuck explains that the problem is that the cat isn't living in fear of his dog overlords, and that he actually decided to be a con man. I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me either. The crow also explains that the dog belongs to Pino, Sasha, and Lucy's neighbor. What? Pino? As in this fucker. No, apparently Dingo Pictures had no fucking imagination when it came to naming their idiot characters. So one of the dogs is named after the sentient cum rag from Toys Room. The other is named after Anastasia's dog apparently. And the final one is named after the bastard cat's love interest in Nice Cats. Though, come to think of it, that's probably why Wabu treated him like shit, given that they both wanted the same girl, and why he moved here so he could perv on a different girl with the same name. 
I also don't get why this fucking film cuts to random animals laughing. I honestly think this does it more than any other. I could be wrong, but this is just so distracting. It's not anything new to me in this universe, but in this movie, random animals appear, laugh, and then disappear. Far more than any other dingo film I've seen. It's like this is a shit horror game on Steam or something. So the next morning, they trick the idiot bastard cat Charlie into watching this hole in a tree, because there's a mouse in it. Except there isn't a mouse and it's empty. Then the cat stretches its neck like... That. And fucking hell. I wish that thing was biologically accurate so it would be dead and we could go home early. Anyway, without any sound effects, a mouse trap snaps on his nose and freaks him out. And he runs around like... That. And I'm just saying what's happening at this point, but it's hard to talk about this one due to there being a complete lack of dialogue or story up until now. Oh, and the mouse does this. I don't know. So then Charlie walks in wearing... Oh shit. Oh shit. Call the cops. Call Chris Hansen. I don't like where this is going. I, I, I don't like this ride. I want to get off. I, I just want to get off this ride, please. Anyway, the cat points out that in reality, dogs can't buy things from the market, and the dogs call him a conceited ape. So dream on about your gingerbread. Conceited ape! Um, you know that doesn't really work as an insult to a cat, right? Because it's a cat? So they decide to try trading something for the gingerbread, like shit or something. I don't know. However, it's too dark out, as you can clearly see, so they decide to wait until tomorrow. Where are you off to, Pino? To find something to swap. Tomorrow. It's too late today. Look, it's starting to get dark already. Pino agreed. They turn up with a yellow ball, a bow, and a bone, and a leash. All that for a biscuit. Nice deal. I also like how the dog here brings forward its leash. Like, dogs can apparently just decide they don't want their leashes anymore in this universe. I guess prisoners can also just trade their shackles in at the local pawn shop as well. I guess they're just fashion accessories like chokers to dogs? Who knows. So they rub it in the cat's face, prompting him to say, Damn. Which apparently is a bigger deal to American audiences. In Britain, every kid says that by the time they're three. It's not really shocking at all. It's not even considered cursing or swearing at all in this country. It's actually pretty damn tame. So they eventually plod on down to the market where the cast of Anastasia rolls up, including male Stasia and his female counterpart. And Peter Dinklage turns up from Peter and the Wolf. I love this dude in the truck with the three pigs doing their head bobbing. It's kind of funny. So, dumb shit dog number one doesn't know what love is because nobody could ever love her. No, can you read what's on that one up front? I love you. And what does that mean? Just that. And it's apparently the case that only Pino can read. Okay. So then this lady starts yelling because one of the dogs picked up the love heart and this dog gasps. Huh? But he's a man and the woman gasps. It's broken as fuck, this cartoon. Then this cop turns up, and at first, it looks like the dogs can't communicate with humans, but they can. And they're basically arrested for picking up something in a store to bring it back to the checkout before buying it. Christ, this society really is racist towards dogs. You see middle-class dogs like Brian Griffin crying about racism. This is the true hardship of dog kind. So, the three idiots get arrested for trying to make a transaction. Granted that they didn't use currency, but they were intending to pay for the item with goods. Items of value. That's more of a cultural misunderstanding than a crime, but fuck it. This racist cop has thrown them in prison and I can't really argue about it. Oh, this guy doesn't get arrested. He fucks off and leaves his mate to die. Or her mates. Or whatever voice actor it has now. I get why Penis had to run away in Toy's room. He probably would have been arrested for being a toy. Hell, he'd have been accused of every rape and murder in the city for being out after dark and sent to the electric chair. 
Then this idiot crow just sort of gloats about their arrest and says that they know the dog's intentions but decides to keep it to themselves because they're an arsehole. Should call themselves fucking Jim Crow. So Lucy gets back to the house and Charlie is a wanker, as per the usual, and laughs at her for being a crybaby. Didn't have enough money, what? Oh, stop it, Charlie. Can't you see that Lucy's not in a bad thing? Cry baby, cry baby, cry baby. This bird's nice about it since he lost most of his family to Wabu during his lumberjack days. Wabu, swan the axe. This is the best bridge ever built. Oh, 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 oh. What have you done? Our nest was in the tree, and now our egg is in the nest. Now our nest is gone, and our egg is surely broken. And in only a few days, our chick would have hatched. Child murderer! Child murderer! <laughs> they were taken away in a car, police car! Yeah, huh? Just as I thought, you didn't have any money and just wanted to steal the gingerbread hearts, huh? No, we didn't! We wanted to swap for my bow and Pino's ball and Sasha's doggy bone! Oh, actually not such a bad idea. I love how the cat says, Oh, that's not such a bad idea. After all, he was literally just told that the dogs were arrested for attempting said idea. Fucking idiot cat. Anyway, the fucking idiot cat gets his fucking idiot laptop and goes on the fucking idiot internet and looks for... Wait, there wasn't wireless internet back then. He's a lying sack of shit. He's not even connected to anything. Also, he looked missing dogs mere minutes or possibly hours after. Why would they put it online back when this shit came out? Four people in this entire town probably had internet and they were probably government buildings. One thing that I noticed about this movie is the lack of garbage area in the far corners. You might notice in some of the other movies that the background cuts off for a certain point and a new background is joined into it on a border around the footage. They either cropped it out or it wasn't an issue with this movie. In all honesty, I believe it's the former. Also, this crow needs to shut up. It offers nothing but a statement of the obvious and it exists merely to pad out this runtime. We don't need a narrator to tell us that the dogs are in prison. We have eyes. I also have common sense. So I know that the fucking dog is going to be scared of being in prison. You are a redundant crow. Piss off. Huh, I wonder what Balto did to deserve being locked up in here. Probably making his shitty movie, that's what. So then these idiot dogs start yelling over each other and the Dalmatians are banished to the pen of idiocy where they meet their fellow inmates and this becomes a shit version of Orange is the New Black. Apparently their roomies knew their parents and are equally as baffled as to why they're in prison as the audience is. Then these dogs yell together and it does my head in because they just make a load of noise. What's going on here? Silence! Inconsistently, without any rhyme or reason. So this dog from Janice the Little Pig explains what happened in the last movie. And this is where I put two and two together and realised that this was some sort of sequel like Lion and the King. I was also there. I had uh... Yes, that's the way it was. Yeah, that sums up the last part of the movie pretty well actually. Oh wait, no it didn't, because this thing goes countryside bears on our asses and shows us a recycled animation movie. This would honestly confuse the fuck out of anyone who didn't know this, and it's why Kid Icarus thought they'd shown the same movie twice. You see, there was a point to me redoing this after all. Oh, still handcuffed. They do this once, technically, as this happened in the last movie and they're just re-showing it because lazy. This was actually what confused the fuck out of me whilst watching it the first time because I thought that this was some sort of rearrangement of the original movie. And in a way, I was kind of right. So we changed this PS1 version of the movie and well, it actually looks better because the colour correction isn't complete shit. 
One thing that's different here is that they seem to have redubbed the lick and stick scene. Originally it was glue and stick, and they didn't make any mistakes. Licking and gluing, gluing and licking, licking and gluing, what's the matter? Do it faster! What's the matter? But I'm thirsty. It seems your last beating up wasn't enough for you, eh? Please don't. I'm still hurt from last time. You see, licking and gluing, licking and gluing, licking and gluing. Ah, I had imagined that it was like that, but not quite so bad. Lick and stick, lick and stick, lick and stick, lick and stick, lick. I'm thirsty. Your last beating wasn't enough, I see. No, please don't. I'm okay again. So, carry on. Lick and stick. Lick and stick. Lick. That's the way I imagined it. Only not quite so bad. So, we had to fix that by adding a fuck ton of them in. I think maybe this was redubbed because the original lines were a bit darker. The puppy originally begged not to be beaten because it was still hurt from the last beating. Dalmatians 3, or 2 or whatever, actually just has him comedically whimper. I mean, the implications are just as bad due to the delivery. I mean, a child is being enslaved and horrifically beaten, but it's easier to overlook when, you know, it's delivered like this. This is also the company that put this lovely image in a children's cartoon. So what the fuck do I know? They also changed this narration, though it's not better. Initially, it sent the crow on a stupid nostalgia trip of sorts, and now she's just like, Meh, nah, it's not so bad. I'm still not doing anything because I'm a piece of shit. She also makes this fucking weird noise. Take care of yourself, Grummel. You might be thinking that at least Grummel is an original name, but it's not. It's actually what they called Teddy in Winky the Little Bear. For fuck's sake. Then this cool 90s hip dog reveals his plan to swallow his bollocks. I just swallowed that bollocks. Yes, I know that's not my joke, but it legit sounds like he's saying that. Interestingly enough, the shittier looking dogs like this and the Tramp clone didn't make the cut for Dalmatians 3. Such a sad thing. I mean, the designers went through, what, 30 seconds of effort to make those dogs and they never saw the light of day. So then the crow admits that she knew that the little dog would run away from home and made no effort to prevent it because she's a bitch. Then this idiot gets arrested as predicted but it's fine, because the crow was actually sacrificing her so that she could see the dog type in the code to the door and figure out that it's just a simple mathematics. Seven, four, nine. And that's supposed to be a secret code. It's just a simple mathematics. That's all it is. Again, on the original dub, she actually said that it was a simple mathematical combination. And I don't know why they redubbed it to make it sound worse. Maybe they lost the original English dub and had to do it again? No idea. Why not just use the old footage? So then they have to count to realise that the idiot dog ran off into the night. And then the idiot bulldog fucks off. The crow just comments on it, of course, because, well, she's a wanker and possibly the true villain behind this shit. Tufelchen smiled at him. He thinks he has to go and play the hero. Now we're in a mess the way it looks. We not only have to feed Timmy and Toby, but also Tufelchen and Butch as well. Let's get going. Oh no, now it's getting really serious. Professor Pollux? Well, 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 you would you believe it? That was pretty fast. Where are Butch and Tupfelchen? Oh? Oh, you mean those two burglars we caught last night? I do like the discrepancy here. That the burglars were caught last night? 
But they knew the Bulldog wasn't caught last night because they saw him about an hour before. But whatever. Come and get them. Okay. So then the crow actually does something and does the simple mathematics for them. After a moment of hesitation, of course, because she's too busy narrating current events. She's actually mentally ill, I swear to Christ. Then the dogs get caught in their own net and it's revealed that this didn't stop them and that they were arrested. Anyway, the cat and puppy go looking for the idiot animals and they decide to chase after the police car that's probably looking for Sasha due to her attempted theft yesterday. It's at this point that I have to ask, how do two guys not get overpowered by their dozens of prisoners? Look at this bulldog! He alone could fucking kill them if he wanted to, but sadly, they're all too bloody stupid and just stared at the wall for like five years. Even when Tramp and the other ugly one keeled over dead, they still didn't think it was a good idea to escape. Then they insinuate that their mother sucked them off or something. It better look like it was licked clean. Your mother was very good at that. <laughs> lick and stick, lick and stick. <laughs> I don't know, that's what I imagine they're saying here. Makes it funnier. So the idiot dog sweeps whilst Charlie the cat observes and reports back to Lucy. And we finally get to see that he's the most useful idiot in the group as he throws a rock at this idiot bulldog and we get the dramatic dingo sting as his skull cracks some more. Oh, no. No. So then the guards come and Pino eats the note before they can read it. Smart thinking, now he has no food. So then they come up with a way to send messages to each other, like they're lovers in class. They don't think to say, throw rocks down on Castor and bollocks until they die and then just walk out the place, because that would be easy. Anyway, then the idiot cat drops a note down on them, again and tells them to write a note back, though he doesn't give them a pen because why would he? But thankfully one materialises out of thin air, or maybe they pulled one out of another dog's ass. I don't know. They then realise that every building in the city has a secret passageway, including the dog pound. Apparently Balto's owner used to be a building regulator or something and... Wait, if he has an owner, why is he in the pound? Oh yeah, this is a dingo movie. Owners don't collect their pets when they go to the pound because logic doesn't exist in this universe. Speaking of which, the owner threw out all of the plans to the building in the city in the trash. So Charlie the cat goes after it and headbutts it, knocking it over and frantically... Oh no. Oh no. This shitload of fuck film has stopped. It's not working. We'll never find out what happened to these idiot dogs. How tragic. Oh well, we got a nice beat at least. It was at this moment that Loz and I cheered for joy because this miserable piece of fucking shit was over. Loz then drew this lovely picture to celebrate. Honestly, I don't know if I'll want to ever review this fully. I mean, the second part is the same as the first, so it feels redundant. I might go back to it someday, but... I think we've got the gist. I really do. Well, I've got another Dingo Pictures movie to talk about in this marathon. So, hopefully, we get to see that one through to the end. Wait, what am I saying? Uh, should we have, like, a red doomsday sky? <laughs> I'm like... Dead grass. Oh wait, that's kind of shit actually. To be honest, this whole game looks like shit. So.
And then have the red water. <laughs> it's already worrying like fucking crazy for this. I have all the plant life just completely dead. We should let a child play this game. Well, watch this game. I should just take this to work and like, hey kids, wanna play a game? And they're like, oh god no, no one of your games. You know what, I'm gonna have a pink fence. Oh fuck. Fuck a duck. That's dead. That's dead. Everything's dead. Everything I want to be dead is dead. What colour can the tree be? I don't know, let's give it green bark. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Yay, fungal! And they live in a fluorescent pink house. Purple shit. Well, this is dog shit, isn't it? Imagine paying like eight quid for this as a kid, like getting it home and opening the box. This is not in the windows. Also, there's no dog shit brown, ironically. Despite the fact that this is a game about dogs, dog shit. Ah, and there's no one to. There we go. Look at that. Masterpiece. Fucking masterpiece. You know I can't even save this. Like, no save feature at all in this entire bit. Because this is 1993, right? Uh, we'll have a pink one a bit. Everybody's gone to the shitter. <laughs> it's like everybody's gone to the rapture, but everyone's gone to the shitter. <laughs> there we go. Fuck his masterpiece up. Oh, I'll take a picture of it on my phone. I've got it on my capture card, at least. Uh, well, I'm going to take a picture of it on my phone. <laughs> masterpiece. Actually, I'll have black clouds. <laughs> there we go. Fucking beautiful, that. Uh.